Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. Today I'm going to be playing with some new gouache from Alter New which makes colouring on dark cardstock really easily. So I do have some watercolour cardstock in black and I am going to be using the Gracious Peonies stamp set. Now this is a huge stamp as you can see. And this is going to cover the front of two card bases. So the black cardstock that I have is enough for two A2 card bases. So it's five and a half by eight and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the large image from the Gracious Peonies stamp set into place on the center point of this piece of cardstock. And I'm just going to ink that up using the antique gold ink. Now you could use some embossing ink because I did decide after stamping this that I was going to emboss it and I have used the rose gold embossing powder from Alter New to add that onto that pigment ink. It does dry a little bit slower so you are able to use it for embossing. So once I have that heat embossed, that's ready to go. I'm then going to take the artist gouache from Alter New. Now these are the beautiful colors that you get in the set and they're all in tubes. Now if you do put these in a palette and they dry, you can reactivate these with water. So I'm just going to keep one palette just for my gouaches, just so I can keep using them again and again and just adding extra water when I need to. So the main colors that I'm using on this large flower over here is some of the... Prussian blue, the ultraviolet, and a little bit of that coral red. And I'm just kind of mixing them together with a lot of water and just adding that as a base layer. Now, once I've added that base layer in, I am going to use a thicker layer of the um, coral red ink just at the tips of these petals. Now, I'm adding less water in, but you can add more if you want it lighter. Now, with this gouache on a darker cardstock, you need to kind of think about where you want the color to be the lightest, and that's where you're gonna add the color. Now, it's different from working with watercolor on a white cardstock, where you would add the color where you want it to be darker, but because my darker shade is gonna be that black color, that's where you're gonna to wanna to add the less pigment. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna do the same for this flower over here, but this time I'm gonna be using that primary yellow and some of the ruby red. I'm gonna mix those together to create a beautiful corally kind of orange color. And I'm just adding that as the base all over the flower. I'm then gonna be using the primary yellow on the tips of the petals to add that lighter shade. Once I'd done that, I then wanted more of a um, ready color. So I added a little bit more of that ruby red in, in the center part. Now to make that base of the petal a little bit darker, I'm removing the paint. So I'm taking a kind of a damp brush with the water and then getting rid of the pigment onto a piece of tissue that you can see onto the side. And that's going to help shine, help the black shine through the opaque paint to give us that darker effect at the base. If you do want a lighter effect, just keep adding layers and layers of color, and that's gonna give you a, a different kind of opaque look there. For the little bud that we have, I am gonna go in with some blues for this one. So I am using the beautiful Misty Teal and the Lagoon Green for this one. I'm going to be using the Lagoon Green and also some of the Pistachio Green for the leaves. I'm using the same technique of adding the mid-tone kind of all over the image that I want to color, removing some of that paint from the base with a dry brush and then adding the lighter tone to the edges to give us that really great look there. It's really great technique to kind of play around with but it may take you a little bit of a while to kind of understand as it is completely different from walk, working with the watercolor paints on white watercolor cardstock. So once I have my image complete, I can then cut this in half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that on the four and a quarter mark and that is gonna give me two card panels ready to go with those beautiful vibrant flowers on each side. I am gonna use one at the top and one at the bottom, so I'm just gonna twist one of those round. For this one here, I did have a sentiment that says, hey, and this is from the Versatile Greetings die set. I cut them out of some mirror cardstock and also some black, and I'm just gonna add that into place using some foam tape. 
For the other card, I'm using the Linear Spirals, and I'm just gonna um, be heat embossing this into place. So I am gonna be using some anti-static powder so the powder doesn't stick where I don't want it. And this time I will be using my embossing ink as I was really sure that I was gonna emboss this. So I'm using that embossing ink, then I'm gonna sprinkle over some of the rose gold, the same that we used for the image, and then I'm gonna heat set that. I then decided I wanted to add a little bit more of an artsy look, so I'm just going to mask off my little sentiments that we have there. For the one that we stamped, I'm just going to be using the exact stamp that I used, and that is going to give me the perfect shape of mask. And for the one that it has the die cut on, I'm just going to cover that off with a little piece of a teared paper. I'm going to be taking the metallic watercolors from Altenew and I'm just going to spray some water into the gold one just to activate it. I'm using a small paintbrush to add my splatters into place. I then wanted a little bit more splatter but this time I wanted some white so I'm just going to be using the pure white ink spray from Altenew and I'm just using the spray nozzle just to sprinkle those into place. I can then remove the little masks that we have I can then add these onto some card bases. So these are white card bases, which are four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm just using the largest of the ultra sticky tape from Altenew to pop them into place. To line them up, I just line up one side and then I press the rest of it down. So here are the two cards complete. I just love how bold and bright that gouache is. Remember, you do need to add the highlights with the most ink on this one rather than the other way around with watercolor. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you like the cards as well. If you do create a card that was inspired by this, it will be great if you do share because we'd love to see. Thank you so much for watching everyone and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye.